Hello, dear student. Today we will uh, will start with our second lecture of protein metabolism. In first uh, lecture of protein metabolism, we have studied the dynamic state of our body protein, importance of amino acid pool, phases of protein metabolism, and then we study the digestion and absorption of protein. So we uh, let's share my screen. screen. So today we are going to discuss two important metabolic processes of, regarding pro, metabolism of protein that is the transamination and deamination reactions of amino acid. In last lecture we, we had seen that the amino acid what we get in the blood they mostly we get as a result of the digestion and absorption from dietary protein and degradation of the body protein. So as we all know that this amino acids most of most part of it is it utilized for synthesis of new structural protein and synthesis of non-protein nitrogenous compound so this comes under the anabolism part of the protein metabolism now let's go to the catabolism part of the amino acid metab amino acid metabolism or protein metabolism so what we uh, see that the amino of the first step in the catabolism of any amino acid is the removal of amino group the removal of amino group is known as the deamination process and this uh, because of removal of this amino group the resultant compound which is formed is known as a carbon skeleton which is mostly the keto acid but now we know that we have 20 standard amino acid which are present in our body which take uh, part in the metabolism but here in this process there is one restriction that not all amino acid can undergo deamination. So, and apart from this, only glutamine, gluta, glutamine or glutamic acid is the important amino acid because that that has capacity to freely undergo deamination to produce uh, ammonium ion and uh, which are utilized for the production of the urea. So what, what can be the remedy when you, we want all amino acid to undergo deamination? So here is the rescue. This is the process is known as transamination. Now what is a transamination? By its literal meaning it says that it is a transfer of amino group. So it is a transfer of amino group from amino acid to the keto acid and which will which will lead to the formation of new pair of keto acid and amino acid so this transamination process help us to concentrate all amino group of amino acid to uh, to uh, sorry to form glutamate and how it is you can see the when the keto acid alpha ketoglutarate takes part in the transamination reaction the all amino amino acid it loads their amino group to alpha ketoglutarate and we get resultant product that is the glutamate amino acid and we have previously discussed that this glutamate is very very important even do you remember that in amino acid pool 50 percent of quantity is of this glutamate so this glutamate has a capacity to undergo deamination so you can see we uh, by transamination reaction all amino acids are channelized to the glutamate and this glutamate undergo deamination deamination means removal of free ammonia and this free ammonia as it is toxic it will be detoxified to form urea in liver and this urea is excreted in the urine so this is the catabolism of catabolic part of the amino acid. Now what is the fate of keto acid which is formed here? Now keto acid can undergo complete oxidation to produce energy in the form of ATP. It can, uh, uh, it can take part in the gluconeogenesis and form glucose. Even it is a precursor for synthesis of the fat and it and through the transamination reaction again it can form non-essential amino acid. So this diagram gives you overview of catabolism of amino acid and here we learned that the, the transamination and deamination are very important process for every amino acid to undergo catabolism.
So let's discuss this transamination and the amination reaction in today's lecture. So as the name suggests, this transamination is the transfer of amino acid from, uh, sorry, it is a transfer of amino group from amino acid to the keto acid to form new amino acid and new keto acid. So it is clearly seen that it is only shuffling of amino group from one amino acid to the keto acid to form new amino acid and new keto acid. Now the, uh, this reaction occurs in the cytosol and mitochondria of every cell but it is occur in more quantity in liver, kidney, brain and heart. And there is again there is a restriction like only three keto acid can take part in the transamination reaction. The one major keto acid we know we have discussed in last slide that is the alpha ketoglutarate which is which will give us glutamate as a product. So first one is alpha ketoglutarate apart from alpha ketoglutarate pyruvic acid and oxaloacetic acid can take part in the transamination reaction. Now let's come to the enzyme. The enzyme is enzyme which catalyzes this reaction is known as transaminases or amino transferase. Now it's important uh, this transaminase need one coenzyme and that is a pyridoxal phosphate or PLP which is a derivative of vitamin B6. Now let's see what what why, uh, why this transaminase need pyridoxal phosphate? So in this diagram, you can see here, like this is the amino acid and this pyridoxal phosphate, it is linked with the transaminase enzyme. So this pyridoxal phosphate accepts the amino group from the amino acid and it holds it for some time to form pyridoxamine phosphate and it releases keto acid. Now, this pyridoxamine phosphate, it gives its amino group to another keto acid like alpha ketoglutaric acid and there is a formation of glutamic glutamic acid and pyridoxal phosphate is regenerated so this pyridox, pyridoxal phosphate it acts acts like a ship's base here because it holds uh, amino group of this amino, um, amino acid for some time and then it donate to the another keto acid and this mechanism is also known as a ping pong or bye bye mechanism of transamination reaction so now as all amino acid uh, not all amino acid undergoes transamination reaction exception is lysine threonine proline and some books also mention hydroxyproline so these amino acid cannot undergo transamination reaction so what are the importance of transamination reaction few points we have already noted down in last slide so let's revise it so significance is it helps in the interconversion of amino acid which are in short supply every amino acid non-essential amino acid can be synthesized from another amino acid so this is the significant uh, significance of transamination reaction then second significance is very important that it channel all amino acid to the glutamate and to some exit in the aspartate and we know that glutamate is a, um, only amino acid which undergo deamination. Now third important significance is it is a connect transamination reaction connects between carbohydrate and protein metabolism. We know that in TCA cycle there are keto acids. This keto acid undergo transamination to form different amino acids. So it is a connection between carbohydrate and protein metabolism. Let's see now in a examples of transaminases so let's study two transaminases which are more oftenly used in clinical practice and in your theory it will help also so this is the you can see this is the ast so ast is a aspartate transaminase the previously it was known as a sgot that is serum glutamate oxaloacetate transaminase ast is a new name and it is derived from the donor amino acid as clearly you can see here aspartate 
Aspartic donates its amino group to alpha ketoglutarate to form glutamate and it forms keto acid that is the oxaloacetate. So this is the aspartic transaminase. Again, it will require pyridoxal phosphate as a coenzyme. Now let's take example of second transaminases which is used very commonly that is ALT. So ALT, it again, it starts from alanine. So it is alanine uh, transfer its uh, amino group to alpha ketoglutarate to from, form a pyruvate and glutamate. And here the enzyme is known as alanine transferase. In previously it was known as the serum glutamate pyruvate transaminase. Aminase. Now, why these two transaminases we are discussing? Because these two transaminases have the clinical significance. Like AST or SGOT, it is used as a marker for myocardial tissue, and its its level increases much high in case of myocardial infarction. Even its level increases in liver disorder, muscular dystrophies, and myositis. While this ALT or SGPT, it acts as a marker enzyme for hepatic tissue and it increases the level increases very high in hepatocellular damage as in case of acute hepatitis, even drug induced hepatitis. So these were the transaminases of clinical importance. Most often the short note is asked in the transamination alone for three marks or even you can get long question on this both processes like transamination and deamination. Now let's move to the another important reaction that is a deamination. At its uh, meaning says that it is the D means removal of amino group. Yes, so this process involves elimination of amino group from amino acid to free ammonia. So this is the deamination. Here you can see the amino acid is removed and this amino acid is converted into keto acids. Now in our body, there are many types of deamination occurs, but predominantly we are going to study two types of deamination. That is the oxidative deamination and non-oxidative deamination. The oxy in oxidative deamination, there is a liberation of ammonia with... Uh, sorry there is a liberation of ammonia from amino acid and it is coupled with the oxidation while in non-oxidative deamination this is a deamination but without undergoing oxidation now let's discuss what is the oxidative deamination as we have discussed it is a deamination with the coupled with oxidation so most of uh, this oxidative deamination occurs in liver and kidney and the importance is that it provides ammonia for the urea synthesis and it also provides keto acids which are which can be used in different reactions we have discussed already in first slide now the enzymes which uh, cause this oxidative deamination are two main type of enzyme one is the glutamate dehydrogenase which can be concerned as a main enzyme and second is the amino acid oxidases so let's see one by one so glutamate dehydrogenase is a major um, uh, major enzyme for oxidative deamination mostly it is the mitochondrial enzyme and it is zinc dependent enzyme now you can see this is a one step reaction like glutamine it, in presence of glut glutamate dehydrogenase removes ammonium ion ion and converts this glutamate into alpha ketoglutarate but this enzyme needs coenzyme the coenzyme is it can use in a, the speciality of this enzyme is it can use nad or, or nadp both so now though you can see this is the first step uh, single step reaction but this is not a single step reaction you can see what happened so here glutamic acid in first step it it would be oxidized to Im alpha aminoglutaric acid and this is intermediate suddenly this intermediate uh, alpha aminoglutaric acid will uh, lose its ammonia or it gives ammonia and it is converted into alpha alpha glut ketoglutaric acid now what is the speciality of this reaction as you can see this is a reversible reaction and it the rate of react 
the uh, reaction can be shifted to either side depending on the availability of substrate and availability of the ATP. So here you can see it is importance of this is it is a reversible reaction occurs in mitochondria. It can use NAD or NADP both as a coenzyme. Immunoglutarate is intermediate. We have seen now how it is regulated. So here you can see after the protein rich diet, our blood is full of glutamate. Why? It, why? Because at the, this, this is the uh, this availability of glutamate will inhibit this glutamate dehydrogenase. Even if the cell energy levels are high, like if there is a more amount of ATP or GTP, it will also inhibit this enzyme glutamate dehydrogenase. On the contrary, if energy levels are low like ATPs are less in the cell, this, AT, this level, it would be stimulated. There would be more uh, conversion of glutamate into alpha-ketoglutarate and this alpha-ketoglutarate will be utilized as a source of energy in TCA cycle. Then steroids and thyroxine, these, these are the, uh, these hormones, it inhibits this alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. Now let's discuss the another enzyme that is the amino acid oxidases. We all know that in our body we have L amino acids. So L amino acid oxidases oxidizes this L amino acid and it converts it into the keto acids with the liberation of free ammonia. Now this L amino acid oxidases is flavoprotein and it is a zinc dependent enzyme. Again it can use FAD and FMN both. So in oxidation this FAD is converted into FADH2 while FMN is converted into FMNH2. Now in this process of conversion of FMNH2 to FMN again, there is a synthesis H2O2 is released and this H2O2 is neutralized by enzyme catalyst. Now, if we compare with the L amino uh, efficiency of L amino oxid, uh, L amino acid oxidases with the D amino acid oxidases, its concentration is low. Moreover, glycine and dicarboxylic acid uh, cannot be acted upon by this enzyme. So, the role of um, L-amino acid oxidases in the oxidative deamination uh, de is, is significantly low as compared to D-amino acid oxidases. Now, as we all know that D-amino acid do, does not present in the mammalian tissue, but they are present in food and vegetable and even microorganism. And in our body, we get this D-amino acid through our food. So how it is metabolized? You can see this D amino acid, uh, there is an enzyme D amino acid oxidases. It will act on D amino acid, and this D amino acid is converted into alpha keto acid. Now, once this alpha keto acid is formed, it undergoes transamination, and through this transamination reaction, there is a formation of L amino acid. Now, this L amino acid is uh, it. It, is, it can take part in any of the metabolic reaction. It can undergo gluconeogenesis. It can give you energy or it can even go through the uh, formation of fat. So that's why the amino acid levels are high in our, um, in our body and it, uh, it helps in the formation of L-amino acids. So significance of D-amino acid oxidases, it convert unnatural amino acid into L-amino acid, which can undergo various processes. So here we have in, uh, ending with the discussion of all the three enzymes, which, uh, which are responsible for oxidative deamination. Now let's discuss the non-oxidative deamination. As we discussed earlier, this non-oxidative deamination is deamination without oxidation. And most of the time, you can see it, it takes out ammonium ion from the amino acid. So here you can see the histidase is an enzyme which causes non-oxidative deamination of histidine and it, uh, and it converts it into the urocanic acid. And this enzyme also needs pyridoxal phosphate for its activity.
Now cysteine is a sulfur containing amino acid. An enzyme which causes non-oxygen elimination of cysteine is known as desulfhydrase. So in first state, this uh, desulfhydrase removes sulfhydrate H2S from the cysteine and convert it into the amino acid. Now this amino acid can be easily deaminated to form the pyruvic acid. Now coming uh, another three amino acids, they are the hydroxyl group containing amino acids like serine, threonine and homocerine. These, are, these undergo non-oxidative deamination with single enzyme that is a dehydratase. So the, sorry, dehydrase. So this dehydrase removes water and ammonium ions. First it removes water to convert this amino acid into amino acid and this amino acid gives ammonia, uh, it releases ammonia and get converted into pyruvic acid. So these are the enzymes which are responsible for non-oxidative deamination. Now this slide so, shows that for catabolism of any amino acid, deamination is required. And this removal of ammonia from the amino acid, it takes a couple of reactions. Like you can see that uh, uh, every cell, uh, transamine is an enzyme which is present in the cytosol of almost every cell. And this amino acid, um, this by the process of transamino acid, Transamination, all um, ammonia is concentrated on the glutamate. Here, glutamate is acting as a uh, acceptor for amino group. So this glutamate, now this glutamate is transported to the liver, and in liver it undergo oxidative deamination. And this oxidative deamination, it uh, it releases ammonia from from the from uh, this glutamate and it, it is used for the synthesis of urea and this urea is excreted. So here by this diagram we can see that both, though this transamination and oxidative deamination occurring at different organs but it still they though they are physically they are occurring at different places but physiologically they, they are joined together they are coupled together that's why that's why this uh, this both reactions are also termed together as a trans deamination so trans deamination is an important part in the catabolism of amino acid and this ammonia which is released by this reaction it is, it, it is toxic so it it needs to be handled in very proper way and this we will see in next lecture that is the fate of ammonia so now it's um, we will stop here and we will continue in next class uh, regarding the fate of ammonia thank you everyone if you like this video please hit the uh, like button it and you can put your questions in the comment box thank you so much